Thanks, Avni. So we've covered some of the highlights of the user experience, but there's lots of other exper user experience improvements in L. For example, a new keyboard UI, do not disturb mode, new quick settings, and much, much more. But in the interest of time, let's move on to the second major theme of L, and that's performance. Let's start with the Android virtual machine. So you might remember that we made a very early version of our new runtime, Art, available as a developer option in KitKat. But we got some really great feedback from you guys, as well as some excellent open source contributions from ARM and Intel and MIPS. And I'm excited to say that we're finally ready to pull the trigger on this bad boy, because the L release runs exclusively on the new Art runtime. So we, we wrote Art from the ground up to support a mix of ahead of time compile, just in time compile, and interpreted code. And it's truly cross-platform. So it supports ARM, x86, and MIPS. We put a lot of effort into optimizing Art's backend compilers. And this has resulted in a 2x improvement performance over Dalvik. And best of all, this one is on us. You don't have to make a single change. All of your app code just gets the performance improvement for free. Art also has a brand new garbage collector and memory allocator. So this dramatically reduces the number of pauses and the duration of pauses associated with a garbage collection event. As a result, your app runs more smoothly. So if you take a look, for example, at Google Maps on both Dalvik and Art, first you'll notice the number of pauses have reduced from two to one, but also the, the pause duration has reduced from roughly 10 milliseconds down to about two to four milliseconds. So now it fits comfortably in a vSync window, no more application stutters. And there's more. Art doesn't just bring better performance, it's also more memory efficient. So it's smart about when the app is put into the background, in which case we'll apply a, a slower but more intensive moving collector to save anything from hundreds of kilobytes to many megabytes. And finally, Art is fully 64-bit compatible. In fact, we've adapt and op adapted and optimized the entire platform to take advantage of new 64-bit architectures. So now, you can benefit from larger number of registers, newer instruction sets, and increased memory addressable space. So to uh, take advantage of 64-bit, we've added support uh, for new ABIs in the NDK, so ARM V8, x86-64, and MIPS-64. And of course, if your app is written in Java, then it will work with absolutely no modification on new 64-bit hardware. OK, so that's CPU performance. The other side of the coin is GPU performance, graphics. And I'm really excited about some of the things that we're doing in L in this area. So historically, mobile graphics has lagged desktop by virtue of the fact that mobile GPUs are smaller and more power constrained. But that's changing quickly. Mobile GPU performance is catching up with console graphics and even PC graphics. So in L, we specifically wanted to close the gap between desktop DX11 class graphics capabilities and mobile. And we're doing that with something we call Android Extension Pack. So we set out to work with GPU vendors, including NVIDIA, Qualcomm, ARM, and Imagination Technologies. And together, we defined the Android Extension Pack. So it's a set of features. That <laughs> so you have to excuse some of the flickers. It's a veritable electromagnetic storm up here. OK. Uh, so as I mentioned, this isn't just a, a, a cutscene. It's actually live, and we can fly through the world. Hopefully, we can get that up in a moment. Uh, some of the rendering that you saw there was truly incredible. So there were really amazing reflections in the water, lighting effects, tessellation were being used for the smoke effects. And starting with the L release in the fall, you're going to see new high-end tablets and phones shipping on Android with this level of graphics capability. So quite literally, this is PC gaming graphics in your pocket. The last performance enhancement I want to take you through is on battery. And we've worked hard to make sure that the battery keeps up with the performance. And of course, there are a variety of systems and components that tax the battery on a modern phone or tablet. So Wi-Fi radios, cell radios, GPS, CPU, et cetera. And you might remember we've had some previous uh, efforts to improve quality on other releases. So Project Butter for UI smoothness in Jelly Bean, Project Svelte for memory, uh, footprint, and KitKat. Well, in the same team, and brought to you by those same project naming geniuses, we have Project Volta. And the goal, the goal of Project Volta is to optimize how the expensive subsystems of the device are used and to improve overall battery life. 
So the first thing we did was improve our instrumentation of battery data. You can't improve unless you can measure. So we created a tool that we call Battery Historian, and it helps you visualize on a time axis the battery usage information. Now you can correlate battery discharge with what was happening to the device at the time. So here's an example of Battery Historian from a real device. And on the, on the top graph, you can see an issue where the radio is waking up approximately every 20 seconds. But Battery Historian helped us quickly identify the issue so you could, we could fix it and therefore improve battery life. In fact, we're using this tool to make this system in Google Apps more efficient so, and we can expect a significant battery improvement in L. We've also added a new job scheduler API to help you optimize power consumption in your apps. So using the job scheduler API, you can make your application more efficient by allowing the platform to coalesce non-urgent network requests from multiple apps. As a result, the platform can keep the radio asleep a higher percentage of the time, thus saving significant power. So you can use the uh, Job Scheduler API uh, from your app to schedule maintenance tasks while the phone is connected to the charger, for example. Or also even just to download applica application updates. I'm sure you've all had that experience where you're out and about, your battery's about 4%, and then applications start updating themselves. It's like, no! Uh, and then finally, we've added a new battery saver mode in L. So battery saver allows you to clock down CPU, the refresh rate, even turn off background data to conserve battery. And you can trigger it manually if, or, to config, or configure it to come on automatically when the battery level is low. So battery saver is really great if you're about to embark on a light, long hike or maybe a long protest, and you say you want the battery to last even longer. <laughs> so uh, on a Nexus 5 running in battery saver mode, you can extend your battery life by up to 90 minutes of usage within a typical single day's use. So I just gave you a quick whirlwind tour of some of the highlights of L how we're improving the user experience through steps like improved design, smarter notifications, and intuitive authentication. And also the enhancements on the performance side, so faster runtime, better graphics, and stronger battery performance. But I only scratched the surface of L. And as I mentioned at the start, this is our biggest release to date. You're gonna find things like better multitasking, Bluetooth 4.1, burst mode camera APIs, USB audio support, and much, much more. Tomorrow morning, we're going to be making the L Developer Preview SDK available from developer.android.com and also posting early system images for the Nexus 5 and Nexus 7 so you can start developing for L today. So with that, let me have back to Sundar. Thank you.